Hello, this is Dr. William Abbott Foster coming to you from the zone in the basement of the main library at University of Arizona. Today's lecture, lecture four, is on this China's state coordinated internet infrastructure. This is following lecture three, which was on the US China the 73-year-old US Russia war. And this lecture will be followed by a companion lecture on what to do about Huawei technologies and how it actually arose from the state coordinated competition uh, that was the policy for information technologies in China. Um, I'm going to start with a paper that you'll called um, by um, Alex Tan, William Foster, and Cy Goodman. It's called China's State Coordinated Internet Infrastructure. You can find um, this article in the um, ACM uh, Association of Computer Machinery Digital Library, ACM Digital Library. Generally, if you go to Google Scholar or, um, or on the internet, they will ask you to buy uh, this copy. But if you are a member of a library or a university that has a subscription to the digital library, you can download this copy. One of the key things to understand is that um, often Google will not point you to the right academic literature um, and that you really, it is really valuable to be, have privileges at a university library when you're doing research. So um, the, today is Fat Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. And um, this, this article is one of the articles I, I published while I was a PhD student. Um, most of the work was done by Alex Tan, who is now a uh, professor at University of Syracuse. And um, he had come to America after a, a, a very important career in China and was able to explain how things really worked when it came to the internet. Um, the, key, the key thing in this article actually is to see the pictures um, and, and table one and table two. Um, this is table one, table two that lists the four interconnecting networks in China. China made a decision not to have many, many networks, but actually to only have four networks. China's China Net, China GBN, CERNet, and CSTN Net. We'll go more into detail about these why these four networks and the four ministries that own them were selected when 20 to 30 different ministries wanted to have their own internet service. Um, one of the important things to see right here is that by um, 1998, China had a very extensive fiber optic network. The reason why was actually that the People's Liberation Army had actually installed fiber optic cable throughout all of China in the hopes that they would actually be an internet service provider. When there was the decision by the leading group to who was going to be a network provider, the PLA was actually excluded even though it had the most fiber optic cable in the country. And so basically the fiber optics that was installed by the PLA went to other ministries like uh, the Ministry of Education and CERNET. Um, another picture we have here that's very important is the picture of the, um, the Golden Bridge Network. This was a competition, a competing network of the Ministry of Electronic Industries that was competing with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications. The key point here is they had fiber on the East Coast and they had a satellite to go to um, provide service throughout the rest of the country. China's a big country, providing service is a big thing. I would mentioned the Chinese Education Research Network, CERNET. Here is a really good picture of CERNET. Again, I recommend downloading this whole article. And what's really interesting is by 1998, after much struggle, they got these four interconnecting networks to connect through a internet exchange that was housed at, at um, China Telecom, the, uh, the owner of China Net, but was actually designed by CERNET, the um, Tsinghua University uh, Education Network. Um, and um, the one thing that's not included here is a connection to the Great Wall Network, which is the People's Liberation Army Network. Um, that was to, was not a commercial service, but there was connections between all the networks, the four networks, interconnecting networks, and the People's Liberation Army Great Wall Network. So 
So that is that. So anyway, I highly recommend. This is one of the easiest ways of reading this article. is one of the easiest ways to understand the internet in China. A much more difficult thing is actually to read my 300-page dissertation called "The Diffusion of the Internet in China" by William Abbott Foster. Uh, this was done at the Eller School of Management and was uh, with a minor in East Asian Studies. Um, the de degree was actually in management. Uh, this this can be bought on the internet, or it's actually free to anyone. If you go to if you Google dissertations, University of Arizona, and then do a search for William Abbott Foster, you can find this whole 300-page dissertation. I would like to actually go ahead and read the abstract of the dissertation. Um, the number of internet users in China has grown from 8.9 million users in 1999 to 22 million in 2001. However, estimates of users alone do not give an adequate picture of the internet in China. The Global Diffusion of the Internet, GDI <coughs> project, which was came out of University of Arizona's Mosaic Group, has developed a framework for looking at internet diffusion at a country level across six dimensions, pervasiveness, geographical dispersion, sectoral adoption, connectivity and structure, infrastructure, organizational infrastructure, and sophistication of use. China's interconnecting network regime has shaped the pattern of internet diffusion in the country. The Chinese government made the decision in 1996 to allow two organizations to run interconnecting networks that provide commercial global internet connectivity. Under a strategy known as letting the suns compete, it has authorized more and more state-owned organizations to run competing interconnecting networks. Under this state-coordinated competition, China has diffused rapidly along all the dimensions of, inter of global diffusion of the internet framework. A world-class backbone infrastructure is being built by multiple carriers. Almost all government agencies and most major businesses have a web presence. 22 million Chinese are using the internet at least once a month. However, though the infrastructure is being built and the cost of access is dropping rapidly, more organizations have not significantly redesigned their business processes to take advantage of the internet. Again, this in America, we had this massive amount of building of the internet infrastructure between 1996 and 2008, but because of our capitalist system, we saw much more transformation of business because of Silicon Valley. Um, I highly recommend looking at the table of contents uh, to see, in, instead of reading the whole page, you can read um, certain parts of that on that. Um, I want to highlight a couple key page pieces of the dissertation, the most important being page 58 through um, 6 through 59, six, 60, which is basically about the organization's leading group. Basically, no one group, the group different ministries were fighting for control of the internet. So that basically the government put together a leading group to make decisions of one, whether to allow the internet in China, two, whether to have an intranet in China and, and only um, allow people to access the internet in China or, to, or whether to connect to the rest of the world. Um, on page 58, I, um, or on page 59, we talk about who was the actual people that were chosen to make this decision about whether to allow the internet in China. Um, and um, you can go ahead and read the names and the different parts, but basically the most powerful people in China came together and in February of 1996 made the decision that China was going to connect to the internet, but they were not going to allow a anyone to connect to the international internet. They were only going to allow four interconnecting networks. Um, so anyway, I've got that. Um, I also highly recommend you look at the Appendix A, um, which is a list of all the different government organizations. There were far more government organizations involved in setting internet policy in China than in America. And um, so I go ahead and list the, the different organizations, what the historical mission was, and why their interest was in the internet. Uh, we've got about, I've listed about 20 different organizations here. I'm not going to go over all of them today, but I highly recommend looking at this appendix. You cannot understand the internet in China unless you understand the bureaucracies and how they work and how they dis decide the policy and the structure of the um, internet. So um, the most important thing to understand is that the Communist Party 
is separate from the government. The government is run by the state council and that the um, People's Liberation Army is not part of the government. It's overseen by the Communist Party. Um, and that probably the most important element of the Communist Party in controlling the internet is the propaganda department of the Communist Party. Um, um, th there's always been this view that media is a way of controlling society and the Communist Party is an arm of the Communist Party. Um, this has been sort of one of the banes is that the internet was chosen because it would provide one um, connectivity to the world which would provide economic growth, but there's always been the threat to the control, uh, how does the Communist Party actually control the internet as a vehicle, uh, as an arm. So anyway, that is our lecture for today. Next week, we're going to talk about how state-coordinated competition um, resulted in Huawei Technologies, the world's largest telecom company, and what American policymakers should do about allowing Huawei to do business in America. This is Dr. William Foster. Um, you can reach me via email at, at wafoster at email.arizona.edu. Um, I welcome your questions and comments. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Sai Zen. Sai Zen.